We have Brent Travelpiece. Brent began his employment with PennDOT in 1992 within the construction unit of Engineering District 3. Since 2004, he's been in the Construction Quality Assurance section as a Q&A team member, a Q&A team leader, and is currently the Construction Quality Assurance section chief. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just want to make one note that uh, I understand everything went really well yesterday with all the presenters and everything. Uh, everything went very well with everything from what I was told this morning by John. Uh, I have to let you know that I am definitely going to be the least experienced presenter that you see at this entire concrete conference, you know, that you had yesterday or even following me this morning uh, because I just don't have that much experience in concrete pavement. But uh, basically what I'm going to be doing is going over the, the CPQI committee, uh, the Concrete Pavement Quality Improvement Committee. Uh, I'm probably one of the newest members on that committee uh, as well. But uh, we're going to go through here today. Uh, if there's any questions that you have going through the different topics and, and things that we've completed and are currently working on, uh, if I don't know the answer, I do see a lot of familiar faces in the group here that uh, most of the people on that committee are, are here in the room today. So uh, we'll be able to get through this no problem. Basically, the CPQI committee was established in 2000 to resolve concrete performance issues uh, with representatives from PennDOT, the industry, FHWA, and the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Uh, obviously, with the, the name of the committee, uh, our objective is to promote the quality improvements uh, of our concrete pavements using newer technologies that can be implemented to improve uh, better quality products out in the field and also help uh, with the cost effectiveness of doing concrete pavements. Uh, just a quick rundown. I'm not going to go through and, and name the names because I don't want to mispronounce somebody's name because uh, I don't know everyone very well on the committee yet. But uh, obviously, you can see uh, this, this is some of the, the members of the committee from uh, PennDOT. Uh, for the longest time, we've had uh, two ADEs of construction on that committee, uh, George Dunheimer and Bill Kovach. Uh, just recently, was it this spring, John? Uh, we brought on an ADE design and an ADE uh, for maintenance onto the committee as well uh, this past spring. So <clears throat> we now have four ADEs uh, that sit in on that committee. Uh, some other people from the pavement side, uh, some from the quality assurance side as well. Uh, these here are the industry members, uh, some of the industry members that we have on the, the committee as well. Uh, got them from, you know, obviously the uh, ACPA. Uh, different contractors, uh, engineering firms, PACA as well. Uh, here's some of our other partners, you know, with FHWA and the Pennsylvania Turnpike and other participants uh, from PennDOT as well, uh, from the Bureau of Project Delivery that assist and, and do, uh, you know, those other active contributors. They actually do a lot of the, the shoulder lifting and a lot of the work on the committee, getting things driven through. And, and finalized through the clearance transmittal process. So we're going to go through a couple of the things. Uh, these are some of the initiatives that were implemented this past year in 2018. These are some of the things that we got done and put into policy. Uh, the next gen concrete surface spec uh, was put into play. And we're going to go over all these just a, you know, in a little bit here as well. Uh, the silica specification revisions, we got through and got them done. Uh, concrete sealers uh, for concrete joints. We got a clearance or a strike off letter issued on that. Uh, we came to resolution on the shipping wires for the dow baskets uh, and also ASR mitigation. So with the next gen concrete surface spec, uh, basically I think that's going to be a new section in, in pub 408 and section 509. Uh, it was approved last July and is going to be effective with change six that comes out in uh, April in a couple more months. Uh, was that put out on standard special provision? Joe, do you know? So it's probably going into contracts now, if, if applicable, by a standard special provision until it becomes part of change six uh, with the April update of the pub 408. Basically, the next gen concrete surface 
spec uh, utilizes grinding and grooving over the entire pavement surface uh, to help increase pavement friction, restore the surface texture, and assist in the reduction of road noise. Uh, the silica, as a result of the <coughs> OSHA regulations for silica, uh, basically uh, back in 2017, I believe we got something in the section 100s dealing with silica. Uh, however, we had numerous specification sections throughout Pub 408 in which we were kind of prescriptive in the way that we told contractors how to perform something. So uh, we had industry help, industry partners, along with PennDOT. Uh, we scoured the specifications and came across 25 different specs, uh, some of them concrete, late, uh, concrete pavement related and whatnot. With, uh, <clears throat> we had 25 different spec changes that we changed, and basically the revisions were made to drive the end result condition that we were looking for instead of the prescriptive method that we previously had specced out telling a contractor exactly how to do a process to get to where we want it. So a lot of that stuff has changed. Uh, those all have, are into effect as well. Uh, shimming concrete forms. Uh, I know this has been a different issue I've, I've heard from time to time. Uh, this was approved back in July as well and will become effective with change six uh, coming out this April. Uh, basically, with the forms, uh, forms don't come pre-made in half-inch increments. So we put in there that we were going to allow the, the forms to be built up no greater than a half-inch to, to accommodate that. Uh, there's language in there specific to building up those forms that uh, has to be, I believe, the entire width of the, the entire width and length of the base of the form has to be built up uh, equally. And also, when it comes to shimming forms, uh, we put a max of no greater than one inch to maintain the vertical alignment for shimming of forms. Uh, concrete sealants. Uh, this is <clears throat> one of the things, a uh, hot topic came out last summer, spring, or last summer and early fall. Uh, a lot of districts were noticing uh, we were getting those road snakes out in the road where the sealant was pulling up out of the, the joints. Uh, one of the things, I, I don't know exactly when it was, uh, a member on my staff, Dave Jarvis, uh, who's one of my seasoned veterans, remembered back that uh, we used to use a type four sealant for concrete pavements, and <clears throat> several years ago, uh, that was changed to a type two. So basically, we identified that issue, and as, as a quick, quick possible fix to this issue, uh, we put out a strike off letter uh, directing the use of type 4 sealants on concrete pavements and uh, worked with the, the new products and innovation section there at the lab, uh, went back through the old Bulletin 15 suppliers that used to be approved to supply the, uh, the type 4 sealant. Uh, we were able to list them all back in without having to go through a bunch of hoops to uh, get their products reapproved. So we just we notified all the, the suppliers that did have Type 4 sealants previously, asked them if they, we wanted to ha if they wanted to have their product listed in the Bulletin 15 again. If they did, we simply put it back in the Bulletin and under the Type 4 sealant. So that was a quick thing that was issued. That actually got, <clears throat> that went out on strike off letter and that will also become effective with change six uh, here in April of 2014. Shipping wire resolution, uh, RC20M. Okay, there was some revision, there was tiny, tiny little revision made in that. You know, there was always a, a debate, do we cut the shipping wires or don't we? You know, so back and forth. And I, I know one of the first meetings I attended was late spring. I think the May meeting is when, you know, we were basically, this went out on CT, came back for comment. Uh, we were sitting there as a group, and it was basically at the time that was either going to be contractor option. You either cut the shipping wires and remove them, or you can leave them in place. And then as a group, we, we discussed it and debated it a little bit, and we decided, you know, <clears throat> we need to go one way or the other. Uh, we, we can't have uh, a mishmash out there. This contractor cuts them, this one don't. Uh, so as a group, we decided uh, we had to pick one way or the other to go, and then it was decided that we were going to leave the shipping wires in place. Uh, so the RC20M was revised, and... Basically, it's a tiny little revision. You aren't going to see much. It's just a couple words. Instead of, you know, cut and remove shipping wires, it says do not remove shipping wires. So it's just a tiny little revision. Uh, 
that will be coming out with, uh, I think the RC standards are scheduled to be updated here very, very shortly. So you'll be seeing that coming out in the RC standards in the very near future. And ASR mitigation, uh, you know, that's been something that's been ongoing and in play for quite a while. Uh, last year was a, a, a good year that it, it really started getting implemented. Uh, apparently there were some uh, final field views conducted in the fall. Uh, no known issues uh, with the late season placements that we're aware of at this time. And there's going to be a summary report forthcoming. Uh, some of the current initiatives that we're working on, <clears throat> uh, optimize aggregate mixtures, uh, full depth longitudinal joint and corner repairs. Uh, the joining group that the committee has is being reinstated. Uh, divergent diamond interchange joint layouts, uh, the Vanport limestone, uh, permeability test change, performance engineered mixtures, high performance dowel bars, and the rise specification revisions. Uh, basically, the optimized aggregate mixes, uh, I believe the, the long life concrete pavement has an optimized uh, aggregate uh, base and uh, one of the things that we decided as a group, uh, I think uh, maybe the, the fall meeting in October, <clears throat> we decided we were going to, you know, go ahead and use, uh, require an optimized aggregate mix for all concrete pavements, uh, not only just long life concrete pavement. Uh, at first, there was a little concern that there may be some uh, issues with some of the producers, but uh, uh, PACA has, has talked to their membership, and it doesn't appear that there's going to be any issues uh, with the optimized aggregate for all concrete pavements. So I believe Dave Jarvis, who's leading the Section 500-408 uh, rewrite group, is going to be including that language uh, with what that, that group's doing with the 408 rewrite. Full depth longitudinal joint and corner repairs. Uh, there's going to be a specification written for this, and some RC drawings are being developed uh, to incorporate both re repair types. Uh, I believe that is getting pretty close. You'll probably see something out on CT on that within the next month or two. Uh, that'll be coming out on CT for review and comment. Uh, the joining group, uh, like I said, is being reinstated. Uh, FHWA. <clears throat> released their technical advisory T5040.30 for concrete pavement joints. Uh, that was actually, that technical advisory was released the day of our last uh, committee meeting. So it was forwarded to the, the joining group. Uh, everyone's taking a look at it to digest the information that's in it. And I believe John has a meeting scheduled for March 18th, I believe, middle of March, uh, for the joining group to, to discuss uh, what the what information was in the technical advisory. Uh, divergent diamond interchange joints, uh, there's RC standards being developed for joint layouts uh, for this newer type of interchange design. The Vanport, Vanport Limestone, uh, FHWA and ACPA and, and several producers uh, out in the western part of the state have <clears throat> probably about a month ago, they spent nearly a week uh, preparing samples and having some testing done at Texas Tech uh, to look at different percentages of Vanport limestone uh, blended with higher SRL aggregates <clears throat> to verify the skid results. Uh, like I said, they were out there for probably a better part of a, a week, if not better, a month ago, preparing all these samples and doing the blends and everything. Uh, so that, that finished up and I, uh, out there, you know, getting the samples prepared. So now it's a matter of getting them down to, to Texas Tech and getting the testing done. Uh, also, there's a continuation of the, the Penn State research on the Vanport limestone. That's going to be continuing as well. Uh, the permeability test, uh, Ashto T358, uh, the surface resistivity test to Section 501. Uh, that's going to be, uh, that's being done and added to, to Section 501. Uh, performance engineer mixtures, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I do know that uh, coming after break, there's several presentations on this. Uh, the data from the SR376 project has been collected. Uh, the contractor did not spend all the money from FHWA, so, so they've been asked if they'd be willing to do another section of payment to collect more results. Uh, we haven't gotten a response to date on that. <clears throat> In PennDOT, the lab does have four super air meters. 
uh, for determining air content and for resipods for resistivity uh, to determine permeability. These have been, are they all out and dispersed across the state to different districts for use, Patty? Okay, well, Patty's going to be getting into that in a little bit. But we have some of the equipment that uh, we have purchased and sent it out to the districts for use to, to gather some data. Uh, high performance dow bars, uh, revising the high performance dow bar specs for long life concrete pavement to allow more bar types. Uh, also, the University of Pittsburgh is <clears throat> going to continue to evaluate the structural capacity of all dow bars to encourage recent innovations in dow bar corrosion resistance and also costs. So that's also going to continue. And also, I know Neil Fannin is working on a, a, a revising the ride specification. Uh, this is in its infant stage, so don't expect anything too quickly on this. But uh, the ride spec is being rewritten to, to basically be an equation-based specification instead of a table-based spec. And then just a couple things to, to mention about the concrete pavement bus tour that happened in 2018. Uh, I was not, unfortunately, I was not able to attend the bus tour. I had a prior commitment. Uh, but all the feedback I heard and all the comments said uh, what a great tour it was. Uh, some of the tour highlights <clears throat> were uh, basically they visited a bunch of projects. You know, uh, when I did see the, the layout for the, the site visits that we were going to do on the tour, it was... Uh, I thought it was very aggressive. I honestly didn't think it was going to be able to happen, but it did. Uh, they did a very good job from what I was told. But they hit a bunch of different projects to compare a bunch of different topics, you know, uh, basically dow bar inserters versus the stake load transfer units, uh, cement treated versus asphalt treated permeable base courses, epoxy dowels and, uh, versus zinc clad hollow dowels, uh, mechanically inserted uh, versus drilled tie bars. Uh, rough and edge, rough and edge uh, longitudinal joint versus a keyway joint, uh, optimized mixes versus standard mixes, uh, the use of PAM spray cure, and the innovation of non-destructive plant testing methods. Uh, also with the PAMs, I do know we are at the, at the lab, we, are, we obtained some uh, <clears throat> PAMs curing material from uh, a contractor out in the western part of the state. Uh, we're developing some samples uh, on that. Dave Jarvis is, was, is also spearheading this with, uh, in working with Patty and Dave Kaniga at the lab uh, about PAM's spray cure, uh, seeing if it uh, also works as a uh, penetrating sealer, basically, for chloride ion penetration. Uh, so there's gonna, they're going to be doing some different things down at the lab and, and testing that for some different uses. Uh, some of the presentations from the bus tour were uh, Neil Fannin went over the standards, uh, once again, performance engineer mixes, uh, the just-in-time training that's part of the long life concrete pavement uh, spec, and uh, the joint sealing issues that, that Jarvis worked on on that uh, strike-off letter. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be glad to take them now or direct them towards someone that could give you an answer. But uh, if not, I appreciate your time. Thank you.